Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Monacani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the Nativity of the Lord, Emmanuel, God with us. Acknowledging that God has humbled himself to become one amongst us, to become like us except sin. But we often know that we do not prepare enough for the coming of the Lord. So let us ask him for pardon and mercy for those times that we failed to do so. I confess to so myself and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault. Through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Lord one. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it. Grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, your waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. All, All the ends, ends of the earth have, have seen, seen the salvation of our God. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. All, All the ends, ends of the earth, of the earth have, have seen, seen the salvation, salvation of our God. 
The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his deliverance to the nations. He has remembered his merciful love and his truth for the house of Israel. All All the the ends ends of the the earth earth have have seen seen the salvation salvation of our God. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing out your praise. All All the the ends ends of the the earth earth have have seen the salvation salvation of our God. Sing psalms to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Raise a shout before the King, the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In many and various ways, God spoke of old to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the ages. He reflects the glory of God and bears the very stamp of his nature, upholding the universe by his word of power. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has obtained is more excellent than theirs. For to what angel did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A hallowed day has shone upon us. Come, O nations, and adore the Lord. For today, a great light has come down to earth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Full of grace and truth, he have beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten Son from the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is Christmas Day, the day we have all long awaited and prepared for. Christmas is a breakthrough in the history of our salvation, so it is wonderful to know that God is with us, Emmanuel, to save us. Today, God has demonstrated his, the depth of his love for us by allowing his only son his only begotten son, to be born amongst us. The words spoken by the prophecies about long ago, and finally, it has taken flesh. And the central message of today's readings and today's celebration is the incarnation and the revelation of Jesus Christ. Our first reading from Isaiah proclaims how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the one who brings good news. Indeed, the good news himself is here with us, amongst us. It is the good news, the news of love, the news of peace, the news of charity, the news of happiness, and above all, the good news of salvation. The call of the prophet today is a call to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. It is a call to adore and to worship the newly born King and Prince of Peace. It is a call to be joyful and to call, a call to take the message about the birth of the Messiah everywhere. Note that I am not referring to happiness, but I am referring to joy. Because joy is the gift that we get from Christmas. When all decorations of Christmas are stripped away, when happiness is gone, joy remains. Because joy is an internal, it is from the heart. Joy is an inner feeling. Whereas happiness is an external expression, it is something that is outward. Joy is of the soul, whereas happiness is of the moment. Joy is a practice and a behavior which is deliberate and intentional. Happiness comes and goes merrily along its way. Yet joy endures all hardships and joy endures all trials and connects with the meaning and purpose. So it is indeed a gift that we get with the nativity of the Lord. In our second reading, the letter to the Hebrews captures and presents what God did for us today in a most convincing and magnificent way. The letter to the Hebrews simply reminds us that God has fulfilled the promise he has made by revealing the hidden mysteries of salvation. Now we are favored ones. Revelation has reached its apex and the hidden mysteries of the old covenant, covenant has finally been revealed in Jesus Christ. In the words of the gospel, in the beginning, John echoes the first words of the first book of the Bible, Genesis. In the beginning, God's creative word gave life and light. From the very beginning was the one whom John calls the word, the logos. In Greek, for those who have been schooled in philosophy, the Logos meant more than just a word. It meant everything from the word to the intellect. Everything all the way to the meaning of existence. It wasn't just the sound. It was something that was alive, something that was charged with power. So John was announcing that in Jesus, we find the ultimate explanation of the meaning of life. John gives us a synopsis of what happened today. The divine incarnation of God. The word was made flesh. He lived amongst us and we saw his glory. The word which was with the Father as spirit is now with us as flesh. 
without losing his divinity, without losing his divine nature, he has stooped law to become like us. He did this by taking our flesh, by taking flesh in the poor womb of a young lady of Bethlehem, Maria. It takes love to do this. Therefore, what we celebrate today is nothing but love, because for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son into the world. We must be ready to share this love. God sent Christ out of love, and Christ accepted to be sent and to come out out of love. The messengers and the prophets announced the coming of Christ out of love. And of course, out of love, Mary and Joseph cooperated with God and God's grace to bring him forth. So we are called to extend this love to others. We can't keep love to ourselves. Love is not love unless it's expressed or unless it's shared. Therefore, it is a season we must be ready to offer ourselves to others, just as Christ reached out to us in love. We too must be ready to reach out to others. Today we celebrate sacrifice. Christ did this by leaving his heavenly throne to be with us and dying for us. So we too are called to sacrifice something for the good of our brothers and sisters as we must leave our highly exalted positions and comfort zones to reach to the lowly, to the suffering, the neglected, and the poor of our society. Today we celebrate humility. Christ taught us to be humble. Despite being the king of the universe, he allowed himself to be born in a manger, not minding his discomforts. As the Son of God, Jesus could have chosen to live anywhere at all. But instead of glamour and comfort, he chose absolute poverty and simplicity, making himself available to everyone, even the, lowly, the lowliest of shepherds. So through the manger, Jesus is showing us that he is always open and available to us, and especially to the poor. Today we celebrate the beginning of the reign of peace. Peace, not as the world gives, but as God promises to offer it to those who believe in him. In a word, a world that is full of conflict, hurt, pain, suffering, let us pray for peace and the grace for God to use us, to allow us to be instruments of that peace. Finally, today we celebrate hope because Christ's birth is a fulfillment of that we hoped for. In a world full of suffering and oppression, of suicidal cases, of depression, of lack of faith, of poverty, of injustices, of recolonialism, of different forms, of modern day slavery, of all forms, both natural and uh, human made disasters, we are called to this hope. We are assured of this hope. The stable was also a dirty and messy place. And by his presence, there Jesus is signaling that he is happy to be with us wherever we are, even in the middle of our own dirty and messy lives. And his manger tells us that there is light to be found even in the darkest places because Jesus, the light of the world, is here. We need to give hope to one another. We need to give hope to the world. We need to reassure the world that we are not alone. God is indeed with us. God is amongst us. Emmanuel, he is here. By the way we live, we should then express and show that indeed he is present amongst us. May the newly born Christ find a home in our hearts. Merry Christmas to you all.
having shared the word of God, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven, heaven and earth, and, earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the Holy Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered and Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the last Amen. As we rejoice at the birth of Jesus, our Savior, we turn with confidence to God, our Father, praying that the peace and light which Christ brings will be welcomed into the world. For the Church, that the people of God will always be a light to the world for those who live in darkness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For peace on earth, that the peace which Christ offers will be a reality for all peoples. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own parish communities and families, that our celebration of the birth of our Savior will make us more aware of our unity in Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who through immigration, illness, or other personal reasons are separated from family or homeland this Christmas, that God's comforting and strengthening love will sustain them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. At this time of joy and celebration, we think of those in our community who have lost loved ones. May they find consolation in the goodness of the Father who sent his only beloved Son, onto earth, this earth to show his love for us and to end redemption. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear, hear us. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright day of your word made flesh. Make us a people of this night. Make us faithful to your word, that we may bring your life to the waiting world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed the Lord forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. This is the Lord forever. 
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the the Lord 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 Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that make that makes us holy, pleasing in your sight, and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through Him, the holy exchange that restores our life is shown forth today in splendor, when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does human mortality receive an ending honor, but by His wondrous union we, too, are made eternal. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord of our hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Just as he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, your spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Booty, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, O mighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the Lord. Have a Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in peace. Our Mass is ended, and Merry Christmas to you all. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.